Good morning. Welcome to the Boomer Tech Adventures podcast. This is Ed Brzee, and you can see my colleagues Jill Spencer and Chris Toy. And this morning we're going to talk a little bit for just a few minutes about a new iPhone. We all have iPhones. We like them, but we're always thinking about the next iPhone. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, the current iPhone that we have and, and what we're thinking about for the next one because we get this question from our clients and friends all the time about what they want to do as far as should I get an iPhone now, should I wait until the next one comes out, and so on and so forth. So does someone want to start? Sure. Jill, you've got the oldest iPhone amongst the yes. three, so that would be great. I I have an iPhone 10, which is terrific. Of course, they stopped production on it, I think, about a year after I bought it, but that hasn't been a problem. It still updates, etc. cetera. And um, there's nothing wrong with it. it. does everything I wanted to do. Uh, however, um, yeah, I have to say that my iPhone is not my device of choice. I much prefer my iPad. So I only really use my iPhone in a limited way, except when I'm on the road. I've always been interested in the camera. That's why I've upgraded over the years. So when the iPhone 13 Pro came out with its various cameras, including a macro, I thought, oh, that'd be fun. But it was expensive. I didn't want to spend the money. So I thought, okay, iOS 14 will be, uh, the, yeah, the uh, 14 will be coming out soon. I'll wait and then get the 13 Pro because it'll be less expensive. Well, wouldn't you know, they don't sell the 13 Pro now once the 14 Pro is out. And although I know I could still find it, I thought, oh, well, I don't know whether I should or not. So I'm dithering. So the other week uh, I got a notice from AT&T, who was my carrier, that there were special deals on trade-ins. So I clicked on it to see what it was. Well, they wouldn't take the, I, the iPhone 10. I said, well, that's a bummer. Then I'd have to pay full price. So I said, I wonder what Apple's doing. So I went to Apple and it um, did have deals for AT&T customers and they would take my iPhone 10 as a trade-in. So as I said, I'm dithering. Do I keep the phone, which is perfectly good? Uh, it's a pretty good camera. It doesn't have the extra lens like the pros do or should I trade it in and get a new one? So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. That's where I am. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to jump in here because we'll go in, in order of, uh, <laughs> of phone. So Jill is a 10. I have an 11 that I got a couple of years ago um, that I like. Um, it has some uh, nice features on the camera that I haven't really taken advantage of as much as I'd like to, but um, the iPhone 11 has been a good, a good phone, and I haven't really been thinking about um, upgrading until I get the darn um, advertisements through email all the time from Verizon. Um, just one other side note, I think it's kind of interesting, we each purchase our phones in a different way. I usually go, I've gone to our local Best Buy and, and purchased through them. Jill, I think, purchases through her carrier. Usually, yeah. Usually until, yes. And then Chris, I think, has purchased directly through Apple. Is that right, Chris? Um, mostly through my carrier as well, but okay. Jill and I have different carriers, so we actually <clears throat> probably get different different offers right yeah. okay okay so as far as iphone 11 um they're up until iphone 14 came out in september just a a month ago um the iphone 13 which was the latest one to that point was pretty enticing as far as the advertisements and jill and chris will laugh because i've been bugging them all the time about what i should do should i upgrade or not I've been talking about it ad infinitum, but I haven't done anything yet. So I'm still happy with uh, the 11, but I probably will upgrade sometime 
um, just to have just to have the newer one that can do some other things. Chris, how about you? Yeah, so um, up until recently, my, my main reason for upgrading my phones has been the camera. Um, I, I do a fair amount of um, hiking and biking and kayaking and you know it's easier to have a camera than it is to uh, carry my my full length telephoto lens <laughs> and um, so as the cameras have gotten better um, I, I've upgraded but now there's a new reason <laughs> for me to consider the upgrade mm -hmm. and uh, that is um, often when I'm hiking in the back country especially um, I, I do a fair amount of uh, guiding um, up at Baxter State Park. And um, for most of Baxter State Park, there's no cell phone coverage. So, you know, that idea of being able to use your cell phone for emergencies or letting people know kind of where you are uh, doesn't work. And um, this is this has been true in other backcountry situations where you just don't have cell phone coverage. The uh, newest iPhone, the iPhone 14, actually has satellite phone capability. Um, at this point, it's only for emergencies, uh, meaning that it, the uh, phone isn't yet capable of actually, you know, making phone calls, but it would it can be used as a beacon hmm. so that um, people can, can locate you via satellite so they'll know where you are. Um, so that's pretty interesting to me. The drawback is uh, that for some people, myself included, uh, we, I, I liked the uh, small um, format of the mini <clears throat> iPhones. And they were, I, I believe they had like a five inch diagonal uh, screen. And in iPhone 14, which is the newest one, the one with the satellite, they're discontinuing the mini. And so um, you'll only be able to get the larger six inch and larger diagonal screen, which doesn't seem like a lot, but um, if you are looking to, you know, minimize um, the space and, well, there's not much weight, but the space that they take up, um, it's just something to consider. But, you know, that satellite is a, is a good safety issue. And I believe there are also upgrades to the, to the camera as well. Uh, it's interesting. Another interesting thing is I noticed when iOS 16 came out, you had to have a, an iPhone 8 or later. So with my 10, I'm wondering how many <laughs> updates in the operating system will um, I be able to carry with the 10 before I'm going to have to upgrade anyway? I mean, it's really funny. I still have my 6S, and it works just fine. I mean, I don't have it that I can... Um, take calls on it i took that off but every other thing works and i'm thinking you know this is somewhat crazy to be upgrading a phone every couple of years but on the other hand the way the companies work and they're in business to make money is you sort of have to keep upgrading or you're going to be left behind with um, getting good service that's a really good point, Jill. Um, a good friend of mine, and don't laugh too hard, everybody, had a 5C iPhone, which was kind of a lower level 5, and um, he didn't use it very much. Usually when I asked him where his phone was, he, he would respond, hmm, I haven't seen it for a few weeks. So he wasn't a heavy duty <laughs> user. But But then something more serious came up that he needed to he um, was a boomer and um, needed um, hearing aids and needed to have a connection through his phone on an app and he couldn't do that. The 5C didn't support the app at all. 
So a lot of our clients have to think about that, the, the exact thing that you mentioned. At what point are their older phones cut off from upgrades? And then that's, that's a really important point to, to think about a new phone. Jill, that was a good point about um, making sure that you upgrade so that you can continue to have the iOS upgrades every year. I think that's an, um, that's an important point. So, okay, so there are a number of issues related to choosing a new iPhone. It's not just having the latest and greatest and shiniest thing. Uh, there are some issues that, that you come up with and sometimes, um, on the other hand, with an iPhone 11, um, I'm, I'm probably looking forward to a couple more years of being able to, to use that. Jill, anything else about your iPhone? No, I just said I'm going to have to make a decision this month whether I'm going to upgrade because I'm sure those deals aren't going to okay. last forever, and I doubt that they're going to get any better. And I, it's going to be interesting, Jill, watching Chris to see how much that um, that special use of the, the f iPhone 14 is going to grab him for his outdoor leadership. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So uh, I guess, you know, no matter what device we ha we end up with, um, I would just remind our viewers that uh, we can help you maximize the use of whatever device you decide to use. Um, you can find us at uh, boomertechadventures.com, which is our website. And from that website, you can uh, get to us on Facebook. And you can also uh, get some really good videos, uh, how-to videos, um, videos like this conversation um, on, our, on our YouTube. So three easy ways to, to get, get help from us. Also, uh, you can subscribe to our uh, BTA club, which will give you... Um, instant and first access to uh, a lot of the information that we uh, gather. And they can also find us at babyboomer.com, that new website where they are having us posted under the technology tab. So there's another option. Lots of ways to, to have us help you and we're anxious to do that. So thanks for tuning in. Um, for Chris and Jill, I'm Ed. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for being with us today.